open their understanding that they might understand the scriptures and said unto them, Thus it is written, and thus it behooved Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day, and that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name among all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. And ye are witnesses of these things. And behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you, but tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until ye be endued with power from on high. Now John chapter 16 verse 12 speaks to the promise. I have yet many things to say unto you, but ye cannot bear them now. How be it when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak. And he will show you things to come. He shall glorify me, for he shall receive of mine, and shall show it unto you. All things that the Father hath are mine. Therefore, said I, that he shall take of mine and shall show it unto you. Listen to this in verse 13. He will show you things to come. Verse 14. He will show it unto you. Verse 15. He shall show it unto you. Luke 24, 45. Then opened he their understanding that they might understand the scripture. Lord, help me to understand. Lord, help me to understand. Ushers, you may be seated. We have done this series starting on Passion Week that speaks to us from this overall concept that says to us, first off, the phrase, peace, love, and understanding. We ask from the words of the song, is there no rule for them today? We asked you that from the song and we preached on Passion Week. Peace is what took him into Jerusalem. On Easter we preached the concept of love and said when the peace was broken, love carrying to Calvary. And now that he has risen, Lord help me to understand what all this means. I look at the text and I'm reading from Luke and it shows in chapter 24 that now after the first day of the week has come in verse 1 and these women have gone and they have found him risen that they have ran and told Peter and John and Peter and John have come and have discovered that he is gone and they're confused. They don't understand. So much so that there were two men, Cleopas and a traveling companion, who in chapter, in verse, uh, rather, uh, 13, leave from Jerusalem, headed to Emos. They're on the road to Emos, and the record says they're reasoning with themselves. They're trying to figure out what just happened. I don't understand it. Yesterday, we were on top of the world. Yesterday he was healing folk and folk were flocking and multitudes were being fed and everything was there and we knew within ourselves that he was going to restore Israel to a position of prominence and now here we are seeing him crucified and two women, Peter and John, are telling us that he's not dead, he's alive, but he's nowhere to be found. What just happened? They're confused. They're on the road and they're trying to figure it out. They're like many of us who after Jesus has come and the enemy begins to attack, we feel like these people and some of you can relate to this. We feel battered, tattered and scattered from everything that's going on around us. We have no idea what's going on and we're just sitting back trying to suck in a deep breath, trying to steady our soul, steady our spirit and try to get some understanding and the what in the world just happened. These two have lost their mind, their understanding. They are traveling a long journey from Jerusalem. They are on their way to the road to Emos. And the record said that while they were going there, something happened. They had an encounter with Jesus. You need to 
understand, in your state of confusion, the only thing that will bring clarity to your feeble mind is an encounter with Jesus. They have been around Jesus, but they have not had an encounter with Jesus. They have been in a multitude covered by the crowd, but they have not had a one-on-one -on -one personal encounter with Jesus. They've never had the opportunity to break bread. They've never had the opportunity to walk with him, talk with him. They've never had the opportunity to let him teach them while they were teaching others. On the road of confusion, outside of the place of blessing, they have a personal encounter with Jesus. Look at what the text allows us to see. He walked with them and while they were there, Jesus began to ask, what, what, what manner of communications are these in verse 17? What are you talking about as you walk and talk with one another? Look at verse 16. The reason why Jesus could ask this is because their eyes were dark. In other words, their eyes were holding that they should not know him. You've been around Jesus three years. You've been hanging out around him, seeing him work, seeing him teach, seeing him preach. And you don't know that it's Jesus who's walking with you? You, 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 you have said that you are one of his disciples, one of his followers, one of his people, and you have enough inside scoop to know that Mary and the others have already been there. You've got an inside track to know Peter and John on a personal basis and to hear their testimony before it's published. And Jesus is walking with you and you don't know who he is. There are many of us who have an inside track to him. We've been around him a long time. We know other folk who are right there in the end crowd and yet Understand the scripture. I need you all to understand something. 
that buried in that text is something that I've said and I'm not going to, to, to do much with it right now. But, but, but you've got to look in that text and that text begins to speak to us. It says that he took bread, he blessed it, then it was broken, and then they believed. You got to understand that if you're going to be on the journey and get understanding, he is the living bread. And when you take of him, there is a blessing that ensures. But with your blessing comes a brokenness. And he's got to break you to get you to believe. And so you can't take the bread, get the blessing, and everything is howdy howdy. When the Lord blesses you, the enemy is upset with you. When the Lord makes a way for you, the enemy wants to destroy you. When the Lord blesses, the enemy curses. And you've got to understand, when you take of the living bread, that the enemy is upset that God has put his hand on you. That God has blessed you. And so sometimes, the enemy is going to try to break you. But not only the enemy, God has to break you. Because Jesus took the bread and broke it himself. you got to understand stand for you to be chastised by God, used by God. God sometimes has to tear you down to build you up. He has to uproot you to replant you. He has to move you to reposition you. He has to bring you down to elevate you up. you got to be broken in the process, but there is a belief on the other side. side of brokenness is wholeness because I believe. And so you'll never understand the process. You'll never understand what you're going through. But you've got to understand that when you get to the other side there is something that goes on. So I looked at this text and this word understanding it's a weird word. Because 24 times in the New Testament this word nuance in the Greek is used. And 21 times, it means mind. Only three times does it mean understand. And the understanding context comes when it's translated or interpreted by the words in which it is used. In the context, and in this context, it means intellectual understanding that produces a meaning. And that phrase comes from another Greek word, gnoskos, which also means to know and be resolved. So it says, when I'm looking at the root words, that I have intellectual awareness because something has been resolved in my mind. I'm only there because there has been some issue, some doubt resolved so that now I can understand. When I track the root word of resolve, it came back to suke in the Greek, which means breathe. And I begin to understand that then breathing and breath is another acronym for the Holy Ghost. So Jesus sends the text by allowing us to understand you got to wait for the promise. And the promise is the Holy Ghost who's going to breathe some life into you and resolve that which you have undissolved and bring intellectual assent to what I'm trying to say. In other words, you cannot understand me without the Holy Ghost. We can't have the fullness because we don't want what comes with it. You cannot get to God in understanding until you recognize the promise that he has made. And so my brothers and sisters, Colossians 1 and 9 says, From the day we heard, we have not ceased to pray for you, asking that you might be filled with the knowledge of his will and spiritual wisdom and understanding. I need you to leave this place today understanding who you are in Him. I need you to leave this place 
today understanding what you have in him. I need you to understand that the Christian realm, we lose oftentimes because we are easily defeated. We perish for lack of knowledge. But many of us do not only perish for lack of knowledge, we have knowledge and don't know how to apply knowledge. There is a discipline called applied knowledge. Many folk have it but don't know how to use it. Many folk, the old folk used to say, go to college and come home and educate a fool. They got a lot of education and don't know what to do with it. You got to learn how not to be a fool in your relationship with God. Because the fool has said in his heart that there is no God. But education will tell you that there isn't. But faith will let you know you are assumptions. I don't want you to generate false expectations. I want you to understand that God has something for you. But we have to preach it in this way because Ephesians 4, 18 says that we are darkened in our understanding. We are alienated from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in us. And it's due to the hardness of our heart. And so Lord, I need something. I need what Job said in 32 and 8, that there is a spirit in man, but the breath of the Almighty makes him understand. Every now and then in your point of confusion, you've got to say, Holy Ghost, breathe on me. I don't understand what I'm going through, so right now, breathe on me. You got to say in the points and when you're in your struggle and your back is against the wall, breathe on me. I know that the songwriter said, I'll understand it better by and by, but I need some understanding right now. And if you don't mind, a blues flashback and understanding is melt. It will soothe me. It will calm me. It will release my fear and my anxiety. Give me understanding. Breathe on me. Why is it? Why is it? Why is it that we can say, lay your hand on me, Jesus, I don't mind, but then fail to say to the Holy Ghost, breathe on me. Jesus can lay his hand on you and bring you into his presence, but there is no understanding of what power you have to the Holy Ghost come. So three things, the hour is getting late, that I gotta tell you and let you go. In 24, I begin to understand that if the Lord is going to help me to understand, i got to first understand the Word. i got to understand the Word and i got to understand the road. Because when I look at the, these men on the road to Emos, they're in a confused state. They are disciples, learners, and yet they don't understand what they've been taught. They have followed Him, but they are forgetting what they know. Do you know sometimes your trial, your struggle can make you forget what you already know? Sometimes your mind and your pressures can be so overwhelming they make you forget who's been bringing you over. You forget that it was not you, but it was all in him. You forget that you've been in a similar situation, in a similar place, in a similar time, and the same God brought you over. It may not have been on Tuesday, it may have been on Monday, but the situation is still the same. Just a different day, the same old stuff, but God is still and so you've got to understand what's going on. You've got to be able to look and read his word. They've forgotten what they know. So Jesus has to open their minds. He has to open their understanding. His role in Luke is to explain to them what he came to do. He came to die. That we might live. They're suffering. They're struggling with his grief. With, they're struggling with sorrow. They're confused because the ruler has died and don't understand except the corner of wheat fall to the ground. John chapter 13 and die. It abideth alone. But if it die, it bringeth forth much fruit. Many of us can add no fruit to the kingdom because we don't know that word. We don't know that the only way we'll add the kingdom, we have to die. We have to kill our ego. We have to kill our pride. We have to kill our selfish ambition. We have to kill ourselves. We have to be a John the Baptist. We must decrease that he might increase. You got to understand this word. Oh, we're constantly 
in line with his word, but we don't understand where the word comes from. Jesus then tells us in John that I've got many things to tell you. I've got words that I want to speak to you, but you can't understand them. They're over your head. You've been around me, but still don't know what I'm trying to say. Jesus is saying the same thing to you. I've got blessings I want to give you. I've got ways that I want to make for you. I've got doors that I want to open for you, but they're so deep, they're so profound, they're so far out of your limited imagination because you have not where I said to you, eyes have not seen, neither have ears heard, neither have entered into the hearts and minds of man. You don't understand what I have for you. You've never even imagined. And I can't give it because of John 16, 12. You are not able to. Why can't you bear it? Because you have not yet received the spirit of truth. You have not yet really gravitated towards what he needs. You, you, you have a spirit that wants to, in John 16, guide you to understand who you are and what you have in him. He wants to guide you to the place and point of understanding. He wants you to know that the Son of God has already come. Do you understand the word? Do you understand why I was asking Chris for that song? My name is not loser. You may be. My name is Vicky. Because in the words of our elders, he already done what he said he would do. My name is Victory. He, he already got up out the grave. Sometimes with Jesus on it because I like to feel him on the cross. Not that I believe he's still there. I like to feel him on the cross because when my mind is getting messed up and I'm overwhelmed with my problems and my issues, when sin is tempting me and trying to bring me down, I like to rub him on the cross because I recognize he was wounded for my transgression. He was bruised for my iniquity. The chest was laid upon him and by I know I'm here not that I'm trying to be healed it says I am so no matter what I gotta go through I remember the word and the word says in the world you shall have tribulation but be a good but I have already overcome somebody here need to be an overcome because the Bible says you are more through him that love. Somebody got to understand, I already got the victory. I don't have to claim nothing. I just got to open my head and receive. It's already mine. May not come when you want, but it always on top. Somebody ought to know the word and know the role of the word. The word did not come for you to cry. The word for you to shout. The word did not come to keep you in bondage, but the word said that the truth shall set you free. Somebody ought to know the word. The word did not come to put you on beds of affliction, to judge you and put you in prison. No, the word said I was in prison and I needed a word to get out that those who are in darkness have saw a marvelous light. You ought to know your word. That's a roll. Remember all, just ease my confusion. Regulate my heart. And let me do what God would have for me to do. The word is my God. And then asking the Ethiopian or the Ethiopian eunuch, our brother in Africa says to us, How can I understand unless someone guides me. Aren't you glad you got a guy? You better know who you're walking with. Because too many of you all think you're walking with Jesus. But I'm so glad I'm not walking with Jesus. No, I'd be in trouble. Because if I was walking with Jesus, there'd be nobody sitting on the right hand of the Father. 
saying, Father, forgive him, for the fool knows not what he does. There would be nobody there pleading the blood. If I was walking and talking with Jesus, I would not have an advocate with the Father. I would not have a mediator. I would not have somebody to help me in my struggle. No, I'm walking and talking with power. I'm walking with the Holy Ghost. He walks with me. He talks with me. And when I'm all shook up and too broken to pray, he understands the language of my second thing real quick, I'm going to rush, is that not only must we understand, I say word, point say proclamation. Got to understand the proclamation, which is the word, and the role of the word. But then I've also got to understand the power. Because in Luke, Jesus says to me, you are witnesses of these things. The word told me that he had to suffer. The word told me that repentance in verse 47 of Luke and remission of sin would be preached. The word says that I have a role in that. But I can't feel my role until I get power. And I want to tell you, until you get the power, you better stay right here and tarry in fact. Because you can't handle what the enemy will do to you without power. Too many of us don't know how to plead the blood. Your Bible class lesson on the weapons at your disposal. You have the weapons of pleading the blood. You have the power of the Holy Spirit. You have a name that is above all names. You have the word and you don't know how to use your weapon. You don't know how to ask anything in my name and it shall be done. You don't know how to plead the blood over every situation. You don't know how to stand on the promises of God, which is the word of God. And you don't know how to stir up the gift that's on the inside, the Holy Ghost. You got to know how to use your power. And so dearly beloved, he gives us power. He gives us the ability to rise above everything that we have. You got to understand the power behind. And so Jesus allows us to hear you tarry until the promise comes, which will be your power. And then John records to us that it's in this power that we're able to be glorified. You can't glorify God until God glorifies you. And how is the Son glorified? If I be lifted up, I'll draw. But how was he lifted up? They had a nail on a rugged cross. Sometimes if you're going to be glorified, somebody got to nail you. If you're going to be glorified, somebody got to crucify you. If you're going to be glorified, you got to be whipped and abused, spit upon and talked about. You got to be challenged if you're going to be glorified. Somebody got to challenge you and say, if you be the Christ, come down and save yourself. If you're going to be glorified, you got to recognize the power that keeps you. Because Jesus said, I can't do it without my spirit. Notice if you will, whatever he was going through, he couldn't make it by himself. I told you this morning in 7.30, when he was born, it was the Holy Spirit who brought about the pregnancy. When he was delivered, it was the Spirit who spoke and kept him while they were trying to persecute him. When he wanted to be baptized, it was the Spirit that came like a dove. And when he started his ministry, it was the Spirit who led him into the wilderness. It was the Spirit who told him it was time to go down into Jerusalem. And so I've come to tell you that if you want the power, you've got to understand the role of the power. And what is that role? Calling what you want. But I've heard that he is my power source. His name 
is not Jesus, but he is so inconspicuous that he won't even let me give him a name. He said some folk just call me wind. Some call me oil. Some refer to me as light. Some say I am a mighty rushing wind. Some say that I am breath. But the Bible tells me he is my helper. He is my advocate. He is my paracletos, my comforter. But Jesus says in John 16 that he is the spirit of truth. And when he comes, he's going to guide me into all understanding. And somebody here needs to be guided out of your darkness into a marvelous light and you can't get there without the Holy Ghost on your side and so you gotta understand the proclamation you gotta understand the power and then you gotta stand on the promise and Jesus said I send you the promise of my father whatever you're going through your understanding may be dark and you may not that you really can make it. But what it says here is that there is a peace which surpasses all understanding. And when I get that peace, I begin to recognize that his ways are not my way. His thoughts are not my thoughts. As the heaven is higher in the earth. And so God is higher.
Trumpet shall sound the dead in Christ go right.